Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Mahesh and in today's video, we will learn target device software installation for Citrix provisioning services. In my last video, I have shown you how to install and configure Citrix provisioning server console and other stuff. So I will also put that video uh, link into the description. You can refer that video as well. So now let me show you my infra first. So as you can see here, I have one domain controller and I have configured DSCP, DNS and Citrix provisioning console in this domain controller itself. So you can always create those on separate machines. There is no issue in that. So as you can see, if I expand the Citrix, so you will see Citrix provisioning server and Citrix provisioning console both are configured in this video itself. Sorry, in this server itself. So now this is my hypervisor, which is ESX host from VMware. And now let me log in to the hypervisor. Let me check the IP address, it should be 10.53, yes. Now let me enter my credential. <clears throat> so basically, as you can see, I have two virtual machines here for Windows Server 2019. So in this video, I'm going to deploy the target device software installation in this machine, which is server 2k19 underscore 02. So now let me open the console for this. And this console, let me open it in launch remote console. <clears throat> so it is connecting. Let me maximize it so that you can see it now. Wait, I think uh, this screen uh, it will be quite uh, smaller for you guys. Let me try to change the resolution. Let me locate those options where it is. If I go full screen, no, not working. Anyway, let me log in here with my domain user account. And after that, what I will do, I will take a RDP session of this machine. In that way, it will be on full screen. But for the same, what I have to do, I have to open the remote console. So where it is, oh, remote desktop, allow it. Okay, apply. <clears throat> so as you can see, this machine is into my domain, which is abc.com. And this machine is getting IP address, getting IP address from my DSCP scope which I have configured in my domain controller. So 10.55 is the IP. So let me close this pop up. And now what we can do, we can take a remote for 10.55. Let me enter the credentials, my domain, then user, then the password. Perfect. So you can see the same screen where we left. Close all those pop-ups. Now, what we need to do, we have to mount the Citrix provisioning ISO media. So for the same, let me minimize this. And I can edit this machine from here into the DVD writer. Uh, I have clicked on the save, no worries data store ISO 
then ISO, then Citrix provisioning ISO. So select it, save it. Now it will be there. As you can see, I'm using Citrix provisioning 2203 version. You can always go with the latest version, whatever is available at your time. So just install it. Yes. So as you can see, in my last video, I have shown you the console installation, server installation, and we have configured the entire PBS form and PBS server in my last video. So as you can see here, in my domain controller, this is the provisioning console. Yes. <clears throat> and this is our form. Let me connect to the form. Enter the IP of our PBS server. In my case, it's 10.100. Connect and let me check on auto login. Connect. I think console is already open there now. Okay, no worries. This is the same console. Uh, this is my indoor form. Mm -hmm. Wait for it. Okay, anyway, this is my indoor form. This is a side, indoor side. Then I have also created a few uh, VDISC and the device collection, as you can see here. I have created multiple for my testing perspective. So, Minimize this for now. Now go to the client machine. And now what we have to select, we have to select target device installation. Why? Because in upcoming video, we will be going to create a VDisk for this machine only. Why? Because we want to boot our system with the VDisk that we have created in our store or that we will create in our store. Click on it. Now, we are right now, we do not want to upgrade this. Why? Because we have to create target device first. So click here. So this is the basic requirement like .NET 4.8 and CDF 64 bit. Click on install. So it will take a while because this is a prerequisite. So no worries. It will take a while for sure. So guys, if you are looking for L2 or L3 kind of support, so PBS is must for Citrix or even guys are using it. Actually, it doesn't matter uh, which hypervisor you guys are using. It could be. Uh, VMware or it could be the Citrix hypervisor, XCP NZ hypervisor, or whatever the hypervisors available to the market, all are compatible with PBS. So right now it's installing .NET 4.8. So let's wait for it. Hmm. Why I'm getting critical error? Because it is already open there now. So cancel this. Here is my form, what I have created. These are the virtual disk or VDisk. If I click on the server, so as you can see, I have configured DC. DC is for my domain controller as this server. And so far only one connection is there, no worries. If I click on the host, I, earlier I have added that host XCPNG hypervisor that I was using, but <coughs> right now it is turned off. So in the similar way, you can always change the host from here. Like I can select VMware and I can name it VMware. 
Oh uh, no, sorry. Let me make it yes xi hyphen zero one. Click on next. Now we have to enter the IP address for our ESX host. So it's one nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot fifty three. I'm just adding one hypervisor. Why? Because here installation is going on. Okay. Uh, do you want to set up? Yeah, we have to close that. Click on yes. It will take some time. So this is the additional activity I'm doing right now. So let me enter the password or username. Let's verify the connections. It's connecting or not. Yeah, connection established successfully. Okay, click on next and finish it. Here now we have our this hypervisor as well into the PBS console. So good. Still installing. No worries, we can wait. So, guys, if you have any query, any concern related to Citrix, related to PBS or MCS or NetScaler, whatever it is, you are always open to connect with me on my WhatsApp number. It will be there in video description. Apart from that, you are always open to post your queries into the comment section. So sometimes checking all the comments are not quite possible actually. So you can also text me on my WhatsApp number if you are having any issues, any error, whatever it is, you can always post me over there. <clears throat> Parallelly, I've also shown you how to add the hypervisor that actually we already did in last video. So good. As you can see, so far I have created four videos. These uh, like, you know, Windows 10 and other videos I have created for uh, from uh, for the machines which are hosted in my Citrix hypervisor, but uh, now we are using ESXi host as a hypervisor. And in production, you will always get ESXi host as a hypervisor. So it's still installing. So guys, I'm always open to answer your queries. You are having my WhatsApp number in description. Please just test only. Do not call again and again. Uh, even please do not call. Just text me. Have some chat. Then, if required, then we can connect our call as well. Not an issue. Actually, uh, this is just uh, a prerequisite installation is going on. No issue in that. And this is my delivery controller. We will uh, discuss those. I think uh, we. Uh, Actually, I do not require to discuss what is delivery controller because I have posted multiple videos for uh, you know <coughs> Citrix Studio and how to create the machine catalogs, how to configure the delivery groups, how to publish the applications. All those uh, topics I have already covered. You can refer to my Citrix playlist. You will get all those videos over there. I think it is almost done now. Okay, installation is completed. 
finish it. Now it is installing CDF 64 bit. So guys, uh, in between, in my last video, I have got uh, some comments actually, you know, uh, in that video, our machines are uh, booting from uh, local uh, disk only. So for the same, actually I was trying to uh, make uh, the separate video for the same, but I, I didn't got that much time. So no issue. Let me show you live here only how to configure the DSCP options for PBS for PXC boot. So this is my uh, DSCP scope. Here we have the server options. Here we have to uh, configure three ports like 11. In port number 11, you have to enter the server location for PBS. In my case, this is the IP address. And the two most important ports are there. Port number 66 and 67. So in port number 66, you have to enter the string value for your server host name, whatever the server you are using. And into the boot file, if you are using UEFI uh, <coughs> BIOS or boot mode for Gen 2, in that case, you have to change the string value to PBS and BP at 64.EFI. Okay. So I will also uh, mention that string value in to the summary or into the description. Now go back here. Okay, so as you can see, prerequisite installation has been completed now. So now we are getting this screen to install uh, the target device. Click on next. I accept next. Windows user is fine, next. Uh, that will be the directory for that provisioning services. Next and install it. Okay, so as you can see, installation is quite simple and our target device installation has been completed successfully. In next video, I will show you how to use Imaging Wizard to create a VDisk or virtual disk, okay? So let me click on finish. I do not want to launch Imaging Wizard right now. We will cover this in next video. Let me click on finish. Oh, it's also asking to restart your system. So let me reboot it. So friends, in this video, we have learned how to install the target device. And in upcoming video, uh, we will configure those options to create a VDisk for this target device, what we have configured right now. So friends, this is done for today. I will upload our next video soon. So I hope you are getting some knowledge from my videos and if yes please do subscribe my channel share my videos like my videos thank you very much have a nice day